Predator franchise. Complete story and timeline explained in detail. To many who may not know, a new genus of spider was discovered in Brazil's forests in 2012. This new genus has the same mouth parts as the unmasked predator from the 1987 movie. So it was named Predator Nops by the scientists to honor the film. They also named all species under this genus after the actors and characters in the movie. This is the impact that the predator has on the world. The camouflaging heat-sensing creature is as much a favorite of people as Arnold Schwarzenegger and his character Major Alan Dutchess. The popularity from this movie over the years obviously resulted in the spawning of a franchise, with timeline-spanning movies and a crossover called Alien vs. Predator, or AVP. It may not be easy to follow the entire series of events. We're here to clear that confusion. Ridley Scott, director of the original Alien movie and the two prequels, said that Alien vs. Predator is a spin-off and not canon in the Alien universe. Since the same has not been said by anyone involved in the making of Predator movies, we're going to assume that they are canon, even though this topic is fairly debatable. We're going to explain the timeline of all Predator movies, including the two AVP movies. Spoilers ahead for all of them. Ready? Wear your mud covers and hide your heat signatures, for here we go. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Number 1. Predator, 1987 This movie follows a group of elite mercenaries led by Vietnam veteran Major Allen Dutch Schaefer after they are assigned a rescue operation in Central America. To their surprise, they find that this was an intelligence mission after killing all insurgents in the camp. An unknown creature begins hunting them as they head towards the extraction point. The war begins when Hawkins, a radio man, had his body dragged away and killed by the creature. The team gets to know that they are not against something human. The only way they find out more information about this hunter is by traps and weapons it uses to capture and kill them. The creature can turn himself invisible, has a laser gun, can see people with heat vision. After almost everyone dies, Dutch and the Predator go one-on-one -on -one against each other. The Predator even acknowledges Dutch as a worthy foe by taking off its mask for the final battle. What it doesn't know is that Dutch already has several traps in place and is all ready for this fight. Dutch finally beats the creature, and the Predator activates a self-destruction device as it's dying. Dutch realizes that quickly and hides. He is later rescued. Predator was made as a response to a Rocky Balboa joke. After the release of the fourth Rocky movie in 1985, a popular joke amongst people in Hollywood was that Rocky has defeated all earthly opponents he can. The only acceptable villain in the next film should be an alien. Jim Thomas and John Thomas turned this joke into a script, which translated into the legendary movie we now call The Predator. What was ideally expected to be a comedy movie turned into a big-budget film action flick that was, still is, loved by generations. It's an edge-of-the-seat experience that no one has forgotten. But is the Predator the only creature of its species on this planet? Let's find out in... <laughs> Number 2. Predator 2. 1990. Ten years later, in 1997, a turf war is going on in Los Angeles between Jamaican and Colombian drug cartels. And guess who is overseeing this war? A new predator. It interferes in the turf war and kills everyone in the Colombian drug cartel. This draws the attention of LAPD, especially of Officer Mike Harrigan who's infamous for not obeying the orders given by his seniors. But it turns out that Special Agent Peter Keyes knows what has happened, and his secret mission is to capture the Predator, as he assists Mike Harrigan. After some Jamaicans enter the house of the Colombian drug cartel's leader to murder him, they are hunted by the Predator. Detective Danny finds the spear tip weapons of the Predator just before he is killed by the creature. Mike then takes it on himself to avenge his teammate and longtime friend. He investigates even after being thrown off the case. Mike goes head to head against the Predator, 
and prevents him from self-destructing by destroying its device. He chases the predator to its ship and kills it in there. Any sane person would now expect a group of predators to come out and kill Harrigan. They do appear, but none of them kill him. One of them, the leader of predators, gives Harrigan an antique pistol as a trophy while others carry away their dead comrade. The predators fly away, but humans have a gut feeling that this isn't over and they will return sooner or later. Jim and John Thomas were approached to write a sequel. They pitched six ideas to the studio, one of which was to put the creature in an urban jungle. The key idea explored in the story was to show that predators have been visiting the planet frequently. They are here for a reason and are not psychopathic killers. The movie didn't show us what they were after, but we got to know more about their origins. And what was shown in the film is the head of a xenomorph from Alien Movie in the ship where Mike and the Predator fight. It hinted the Predators have battled and defeated one of them. The head is their trophy of that victory, which only means one thing. Number 3. Alien vs. Predator 2004, after a heat signature is detected beneath Bavatoya, an island 1,000 miles off Antarctica, Charles Bishop Wayland of Wayland Industries gathers a team to explore the heat signature coming from this pyramid, 2,000 feet beneath the ice. Unbeknownst to them, a predator ship has also marked the pyramid as they want to kill whatever is in there. The humans accidentally awaken the alien queen from her cryogenic stasis. A battle takes place in which everyone but humans, Queen Xenomorph, and one Predator die. And then, of course, Alien and the Predator go against each other. In the end, the Predator kills the Alien. But in her dying breath, Alien manages to stab the Predator with its tail. A Predator ship appears to collect their dead comrades. They award a human for their help whom the dying Predator had marked. After they take off, an Alien-Predator hybrid bursts out from the dead Predator's chest. It's not all over yet, it seems. The concept of this movie arose from the 1989 comic book Alien vs. Predator. It was also hinted in the previous Predator movie. This means that even if Ridley Scott and James Cameron don't consider Alien vs. Predator as canon for Alien films, the film is certainly canon in the Predator universe. After all, the Predators had killed at least one Xenomorph as is evident from the head in Predator 2. But the important thing to note here is that the battle between Xenomorph and the Predators isn't over yet. And so, we move on to the next movie. <laughs> Number 4. Alien vs. Predator, Requiem, 2007. The movie picks up immediately after the events of the previous film. The Predalien, Predator and Alien hybrid, erupts out of the dead Predator's chest just before he dies. It goes on a murdering spree on the ship, and the ship crash lands in Colorado. All but one Predator dies, who sends a distress signal to home before taking its last breath. As the Predalien goes free, Planting embryos in humans, a veteran predator named Wolf receives the distress signal. It decides to travel to Earth to clean this mess. In a battle between Wolf and the Predalien and its children, many humans die. The battle is ended by the US government as it drops a nuclear bomb killing everyone. The movie was specifically made for the fans of Alien and the Predator movies and to tie the loose ends in the previous film. But where the movie failed is the storyline. Neither in the first AVP movie, nor in Requiem, any one of the two creatures in the title won. Humans had to step in with a nuclear bomb to end it all, which honestly feels anticlimactic, like the fans did not get what they were promised. The movie also made several references to previous Predator and Alien movies, which were good Easter eggs. But perhaps that is the only good thing about the movie. And by any chance, if you think the Predators are dead and gone from the Earth, you're wrong, because the next movie, has a whole lot of them. We're talking about... Come on! Come on! Number 5. Predators. 2010. It turns out that a group of humans, including U.S. Forces Special Operations Forces veteran Royce, finds themselves in a jungle that is not on Earth. Instead, they are on a game reserve for humans. 
and bang in the middle of a turf war between the predators and the larger predators known as the super predators. All of these humans are dangerous and now must find a way out of this planet. Repeated attempts are made to kill the three super predators, Tracker, Falconer, and Berserker, to use their ship to go home. Tracker is killed by Nikolai, a Russian commando, with Claymore mines and also sacrificing himself in the process. Falconer is killed by Hanzo, a Yakuza assassin, with a katana just before dying. And the final predator, Berserker, is fought by Isabel, a sniper from Israeli forces, and Royce. She shoots him, and Royce decapitates the predator with an axe. As more parachutes open up in the sky, they know that more predators are coming and must get out of there. Robert Rodriguez, also one of the producers, wrote the script in 1994 as the third Predator movie, but it was rejected due to massive budget requirements. It was picked up 15 years later. It was ideally supposed to be a sequel to Predator 2, but since it's made 23 years later, changes were made to the script to make it appear like a reboot. However, the movie does reference the original Predator movie in various places, hinting that it's set much after the events of that movie. Fans consider this the second best film in the franchise after the original. It retains the essence of what made the 1987 Predator great. Now it's time for the Predators to visit the Earth in... Number 6. The Predator, 2018 this time, a predator crash lands on Earth, but he finds that it isn't the strongest one here. He is soon captured and confined to a laboratory to be conducted experiments on. But since the predator isn't that weak, he breaks out from the laboratory, killing everyone he finds except for one unarmed person. Before the predator hunt begins, U.S. Army Ranger Sniper Quinn goes to his home where he mailed the predator's armors because that's what the predator is going to come for but he finds that his son has gone out trick-or-treating wearing the armor to protect himself from bullies who make fun of him for his autism. So now, Quinn not only has to capture the Predator again, but also save his son. It is soon revealed that the Predators are here to infuse their DNA with humans and become bigger, better, and stronger. At some point in the movie, it is believed that the autism of Quinn's son is vital to Predator hybridization. Humans kill the Predator with its own weapons, and that's the end of the movie. Given that Shane Black, one of the actors in the original Predator movie, is the director and writer of the film, fans were expecting it to be a good movie. A mess is what it became. If you like the Predator movie even slightly, don't recommend watching it. But if you are a completionist, we can't really say anything now, can we? And now that we have four Predator movies, two AVP movies, What is the future of the franchise? Nothing can be said. There is no update if someone wants to make a new Predator movie. As fans of the franchise, we do need a cleanser after whatever the latest Predator was, but it looks like we'll have to wait for it for a long time. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe.